All right, so section 7-4, applying properties of similar triangles. Two things that need to be similar. What are the two things they need to have in order to be similar? You know, they have to have the same what? Angles, and the sides have to be proportional. So angles have to be the same, sides have to be proportional. Very good. Um, we're going to look at problems like this today. Um, we're talking about the triangle proportionality theorem. So right here, the triangle proportionality theorem. It states, if a line parallel to a side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So for example, these two lines are parallel. Because the two lines are parallel, that means these sides right here are proportional to each other. Okay, it says those sides are proportional. What is proportional? What did you say? It means like the ratios of the side lengths are the same. Oh. Okay. So for example, here we have an example down here. I'm going to call it EGX. All right. I can set up a lot of different ways to proportions. The biggest thing is you have to be consistent. Okay. So I can say they do X over 6 equals 7.5 over 5. Notice there. They did X over 6 equals 7.5 over 5. So they did big over big, small over small. Okay. I could also go X over 7.5 equals 6 over 5 and set proportions up. Okay, the biggest thing is to be consistent in how you set up. You don't want to just flip them around, flip-flop them. All right, so for example here, the proportion, you have 3 over 1 and 6 over 2. Um, there'd be a ratio of 3 to 1, basically. Does that make sense, Reed? Yeah. All right. So let's look at the first one here. I want to do RQ. So let's find the length of each segment in exercises 1 and 2. I'm going to call it RQX. I want to set up a proportion here to find RQ. Um, I'm just going to go in order here. So I'm going to go 12 over x equals 6 over 7. Does everybody see how I just went in order? I don't want to flip-flop, but I just want to make it simple here. It's 12 over x, 6 over 7. And now, do I even have to use cross products to solve this? No. No. Can I just use equivalent fractions? Yeah, what's well, x going to have to equal? 14. 14. Nice job. Again, it's basically divide 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 7 times 2 is 14. Okay. Two, I need to set a proportion up. Jake O'Connor, do you think you can set, set up a correct proportion? What do you got? 45. Which one? What? Number two? Nice job. 20 over 16 equals 38 over X. So I did 20 over 16 equals 38 over X. And now I use cross products to solve. So 38 times 6 divide that by 22 or 20 and you end up with JN or X has to equal 38 times 16 it's not 11 30.4 nice job then I have number three number three says to show <coughs> that TU and WX are parallel well, to show it's parallel, what do you know about the ratios here? The ratios would have to be the so same. So let's do 18 over 45. What would 18 over 45 simplify to? Uh, 2 over 3. 2 over 3. 2 over... Divide both by 9? 2 over 5. 2 over 5. Then do 6 over 15. If I take 6 over 15 and simplify that one. Be two or five as well. Are the ratios the same? Yes. Because the ratios are the same. Are the, then my lines parallel? Yes. Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, they are. Take a couple seconds. Try these two on your own. Number four, Becca. How would you set this up? Fifteen over x equals ten over eight. Sure, there's one way to do it. So you compare in these sides. When you do that, you get x equals what? Twelve or ls equals twelve. Nice job. Um, five. I need to set this one up. Tyler Wilson, how'd you set this one up? Uh, one over four equals one over x. So Tyler, what's it gonna be? X equals four. Yeah. Did you have to do much work on that one? Probably. Yeah. No, you could be like Psh, those are the same. These gotta be the same. Nice job. Okay. Last thing they were talking about 
is what's called the triangle angle bisector theorem. Okay? It states an angle bisector of a triangle divides the opposite side into two segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. So what that means here is 15 over 9 is the same proportion as 40 over 24. Or what I say is just kind of set up already. 40 over 24 equals 15 over 9. You can just set it up just like that. Okay. Um, now again, there's other ways to set it up. For example, down here at the bottom, so we're looking right here. Um, they're comparing, so x over 6 is equal to x plus 3 over 10. That's one way to set it up. Okay, if it's set up like this, I would just go straight in order. I would say x plus 3 over x equals 10 over 6. Okay, as long as you're being consistent in how you set it up, it would be the same answer either way. Now, let's talk about how you'd solve this problem, though. So let's say you set it up like they do here. Um, x over 6 equals x plus 3 over 10. I would do cross products. So 10 times x gives me 10x. And I'd have to do 6 times x plus 3, which means I would have to distribute the 6. I have to take the 6 times the x and the 6 times the 3. And that gives me 10x equals 6x plus 18. So when you have multiple terms there, you need to make sure you multiply it to both terms. You need to distribute. Then you solve. When you solve, you get x equals 4.5. Plug that in, and you get your two answers. Okay. So let's set up the first one, number six. Find each length here. Um, I have EF and FG. So I have um, the sides, lengths are X, X plus 2, 8, and 12. Who thinks they can set up a correct proportion here? Chris, what are you thinking? X over 8 and then X plus 2 over 12. X over 8 equals x plus 2 over 12. Nice shot. x over 8 equals x plus 2 over 12. When you do that, now you do cross box solve. So I do 12 times x gives me 12x. 8 times x is 8x. 8 times 2 is 16. So 12x equals 8x plus 16. What's x going to equal? x equals 4. I subtract 8x over. 4x equals 16, or x equals 4. I take 8 times x, and then I do 8 times 2. Oh, okay, so you don't, so you don't just put 8 to the x. I totally get what you're doing now. Okay, let's try number 7 here. I need to set a proportion up for 7. Um, Claire, set a proportion up for number 7 for me here. That would work. 40 over 3y equals 16 over y plus 3. Nice job. So I'm going right there and right here. Okay, now I'm going to do that. I'm going to use cross products to solve. So I'm going to take 16 times 3y. What's 16 times 3y? 48y. 48y equals 40 times y plus 3. 40y plus 120. I would next then subtract 40y. 8y equals 120. Divide both sides by 8. And you get y equals 15. Nice job. Good work there. Take up a second to try these two on your own. All right, let's start walking through these here. Number eight. Let's go with Trent Bannister. Trent, set up number eight for me. Number eight. Yep. Right. Equals what? Four over X. Okay, so now I use cross products. Four times X plus three gets me four X plus 12. Five times X minus one equals five X minus five. Now I solve, I would add the 5 over, subtract the 4x over, and I get x equals 17, which then means my side lengths are 20 and 16. Number 9, 
Set up the proportion for number nine. Quinn, how'd you set it up? Could you set a proportion up for me? Okay, that's one way to do it. And then 14 over 9 plus 1. That's one way to do it. That'd work. Yeah. Yep, the other way is you could have done 21 over 14, 2y minus 4 over y plus 1. Same thing. Now I do cross products. 14 times 2y minus 4. 28y minus 56. Oh. Equals cross products there. 21y plus 21. Subtract 21, add 56. When you do that, you end up with y equals 11. Nice job. See a side length here of 12 and 18. Nice job. Here's your assignment today.